This is a 1970 International Harvester three-quarter ton four-wheel drive travelette. Uh, it was built in Springfield, Ohio, and it was shipped to New Jersey where it became a fire truck. Uh, occasionally, if the sun hits it right, just right in the windshield, you can see where it said arson investigation across the top of the windshield. Uh, a previous, the previous owner bought it at a public auction, I think around 2009 or so, and I bought it from him in 2012. It has an International Harvester 345 V8 engine. Uh, at some point in its fire truck life, they put a reman engine in it. I don't really know why or, or any details about it. Uh, the entire truck only has 20,000 miles on it, so the engine has something less than that, I'm pretty sure. Uh, that's why it's a gray color instead of the standard red. Uh, it does have uh, Hamilton fuel injection, uh, throttle body fuel injection, so it's great for cold starts, hot starts, it always starts, you don't have to mess with points. Uh, probably one of the best modifications you can do uh, to these engines. It does have a little bit of rust on the inner fenders. Uh, the passenger side is worse than the driver's. I was always going to take it, uh, take it apart and repaint the, the the inner fenders and paint the engine and do all that, but I just never got around to it. Uh, it does have a, the battery's a little over a year old. Uh, I did put in a new four core, or at least I had the original radiator record with a four core radiator. I had it professionally painted. It's uh, not quite the original red color. It's more of a brighter orangish red than the uh, original, more classic red. It's kind of a it is a it is a Navistar color, but it's a more modern color than the 1970 red. Uh, they did paint, you know, the door jams and and everything. Like I said earlier, uh, Hamilton fuel injection always starts. Nice and easy. Currently almost 24,000 miles. Uh, modern radio. There's a console up above that has a CB radio mounted in it. That's also where the radio speakers are. The overdrive I'll show later operating. Uh, there's a gear vendor's overdrive. It's after the transfer case, so there's there's four speeds, and you can effectively use the overdrive in third or fourth. So it gives you an extra two gears if you need them. Really, the one over on, on top of fourth is the most important because that allows you to go 70 miles an hour or so with not as high engine RPM. The seats are from a. Early 2000s vintage uh, Ford F-150, the front and back both match. Uh, they have a cloth covers on them right now. Uh, I'm sure a vinyl cover would probably be more period correct, but the cloth is more comfortable. And the back, once again, you can see the door jams are all painted, nice and solid. The cab was in really good shape as far as rust goes. The previous owner, he, he patched some of the holes and things where they had uh, lights mounted and, and things. But, you know, he did a good job of welding them all up. There's not, like, fiberglass or anything to cover holes. Uh, car seat, my kids ride in here all the time. The back seat's identical to the front. Uh, from the rear, there's a receiver hitch. Uh, I do a lot of towing with it. It goes great. Uh, there's a brake controller inside for trailer brakes. The taillights are not original. Originally they used kind of a weird bracket setup with a scout style taillight, which I first of all didn't, ha didn't have when I got it and I always thought it looked kind of dumb. So that's why it has a steel mounted uh, round taillights. The fuel tank is in the, the back of the bed, in the very front of the bed. You can fill it from either side. It's about a 20 gallon tank. Uh, it replaced, it originally had a single passenger side under cab fender fill tank, which I wasn't real crazy about. It was always hard to fill. Plus it, uh, I didn't like sitting on top of it. 
There is a few cracks right in the center of the tailgate. I don't know if they'll show up in the video or not. Uh, this happened when I was bringing home the Dana 60 model that I'll show later in the front. It was too big for the bed and it sat on the tailgate and cracked it a little bit. It's one of my bigger bonehead moves with the truck. Tires are 26 or 265, 70, 17 uh, on aftermarket aluminum rims. Tires are about the same diameter as the original tires. They're a little wider though. Uh, you can see it has overload springs in the back that only contact the frame when you have a heavy weight on it. The uh, chrome step bars are mounted to the frame and not the not the cab. So they're mounted directly to the frame, so they're good and solid. Uh, the body was, was being a fire truck kept inside. It's all, it was all nice and straight. Uh, we didn't need a whole lot of body work. The, the previous owner installed the bed. He had a nice bed that he put on it, uh, and then I painted it all to match. The small West Coast style mirrors are, are desirable. They're hard to find. Uh, these are real nice. Same with the uh, clearance lights. They're, they're hard to find in this, this good a shape. There's Dana 60 models uh, in the, the front and the back. The back axle is the original axle. It has drum brakes on it. Uh, it was original to the truck. The front axle is from a Dodge, uh, early 80s Dodge three quarter ton truck. Um, but so it has disc brakes on it and lockout hubs on the outside. I uh, basically swapped out the original. The original Dana 44 front axle had closed knuckles that were always a mess and uh, had drum brakes so this was a, a pretty good improvement for drivability. Uh, they both have 410 gear ratio so that combined with the overdrive uh, makes for a good good driving truck. We're getting ready to get on the highway here. We're starting out in second gear. So you can shift into third gear. You can you can shift into third overdrive if you want. Not really needed here in Indiana. Yeah, it's a little bumpy, but 